Hi, I'm Angela Wolf. I'm a fashion designer and online instructor. And today we're gonna to take a slip dress from the 20s and make a really cute modern top. Behind me I have two tops. One has a cutout design and one has embroidery, both made of the same simple pattern. Here's the pattern I chose, a very easy top. But the reason I chose this one is because it has a back yoke, a very easy place to add embellishment. So here is my back yoke and I've traced it onto cardboard. This makes it really easy for you to move things around. So for the cutout design, I split this in half. I've added seam allowances to each one, and I'll know that the fabric that I'm going to cut out needs to be bigger than this, okay? For the embroidery design, we'll actually embroider the whole section here. So let's go over to this software. I have a software here that I wanna make. I have chosen a design. I found a free clip art online. And I want to make a kaleidoscope. So I've already, in, here's the design, looks kind of like a heart. And for the cutout design, I'm going to focus on this section right here. I want to have an enclosed area to cut. Right now, if I cut this, I'd have a lot of openings. So by maneuvering this, I get a lot of different designs here. I have a lot of options here. All of these designs, let's just try this one, flower. When I click flower, this is what happens. It changes, and as I turn it, it changes even more. Now that would be a great embroidered design, but we're working on cutting right now. So I'm gonna go right up here, this design, and I'm gonna focus on this center area because I just wanna have a small area to cut. And as I keep moving this, notice how these are changing. They're getting a little closer. So I'm gonna to continue to move them around. I can make this larger, smaller, but once I have a perfect design, this is actually what I want. This here. This is what I've cut out. So that's, you can kind of see on the software here in the center, it's kind of going that way, I'm just not quite there yet. So this is the design. So what I do is once I have that design, I save it to a USB and I bring it over to a digital cutting machine. Now before I start cutting, there's a few things you need to do. This is the fabric. It's a medium weight knit, has some stretch. Believe it or not, uh, you can use this in a cutting machine. But in order to do that, I need to stiffen the fabric a little bit. And you can see the difference very easily when I do this. So I've stiffened the fabric. And then I also put down this paper onto the, the scanning mat. And this helps to hold the fabric in place. So I've already done a few steps ahead. I've already done a test cut, and that's this little section right here. I'm gonna pull back. So I know that this is going to cut this just fine. And my blade was actually set at a seven, which is pretty high, but this is a thick knit. So let's go in. I've already installed my design from the USB, like I mentioned, and I'm gonna go under Save Designs. And here is my design. There's a few things I need to change though. If you notice on the top, it didn't have the outside boxes. All I cut out were those inside parts. So let's hit okay. And now let's change this around a little bit. I notice a little red box over the inside. I don't want that. I wanna keep all those little boxes, but I don't wanna keep the outside. See if I can get, see that now the whole thing is with the red box? Let's get rid of that. And I think there's one more big box, there sure is, and I'm gonna delete that. Now I have my design. But I want, I actually want five of those, so in order to have five of those, I need to connect all of those into one design. So here, I'm gonna connect all of them together. Perfect, that looks great. Okay, so now I have one design. Let's make four more of those, because I need five. Two, three, four, five. Actually, four more. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is move these around. Looks like I need one more design there. Let's add one more. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna move these around, and I want them to be really close to each other but not touching, because you have to imagine all of those little circles are going to cut out. So if they're crossing, then you're gonna really screw up your design. So you take your time, use the grid to move that around. Now I'm going to actually go back, I've already 
done this and made it sure it was perfectly straight. It takes a few minutes, so I'm just gonna go in, and this was my save design that I'm going to cut. I'm gonna click OK. I've already loaded my mat, and I'm going to cut. And that's it, it's cutting out my design that you see there. So what about if you want to embroider? There are other options here. Let's go back to our software. Here is my design. Now, to embroider, you'd probably want a motif that's enclosed on the outside. It wouldn't necessarily have to be, but let's just go in and see what else we have. How about a circle? Now, when I move it around, let's see what we have. Make this a little smaller. You can see this can be really fun. I'm gonna keep moving it around. What about way down here? Hey, I like that. That's really fun. And that's very similar to the design that I actually embroidered on the top. And there's one more thing I wanna show you. There's a pinwheel on here. And look it, there's a whole nother design. So you could sit here for days on one simple clip art. But I'm gonna go back to, let's see, let me turn this off. Let's go back to this design right here. And it's very similar, I've already printed it off, to this here. This is the design. I'm gonna save this as a JPEG to my USB and bring it over to the sewing machine so I can embroider. So here's my design. I've imported this into the machine. I'm just, oh, it looks like it took the little thread tag, so we're just gonna let it embroider. And you can see it makes a design exactly like we put in there. This is so easy to do. Can you imagine how many designs you can do with that software? So let's let this embroider, and now let's go back up and see how our cutting machine worked out, and I wanna show you a few more things. So here is our mat. Let me take this out, unload it, and you can actually see the little pieces they cut right out. That looks really good. You have to imagine this, when I first saw this, I thought there's no way that a, a machine could actually cut this. So what I'll do is I'll peel back, you can see that extra paper back I told you about for fabric. So I'll end up peeling all of that back and then I'll clean off if there's any little raw edges, clean those off. But here is our design. Very simple to do. So you do have other options by the way. There are larger mats. And so what I did was I actually, there's a drawing feature that I used to draw out this entire design to see how big I could actually get it. So here's another pattern, just a very simple, this is the back of my Rouge T pattern. This would fit almost on the entire center back of a, of a top. Wouldn't that be really neat to have a cutout design and maybe do a, two different colors of knit fabric? So here's the large mat. I everything is the same where I would put this down with some extra paper, cut it, and I would have this right here. So you can definitely see how that could work in the top. Or the dress I'm wearing, that could be pieced into a color block dress. There are a lot of options. And I wanna go to one more piece that I have here. This design doesn't just have to be cut with knit. Look at how pretty this is. This is just organza. And I've put another piece behind it just like this. So this is another design, but what I did here is I chose a pattern that had a little sleeve. So here is my, the piece that I cut, which I made sure it was larger than my pattern piece. So here is my pattern piece. So when you're cutting the designs, don't choose your, don't cut your fabric out first. I mean, just cut yourself a big square that's larger than what you need. So here's mine. So then I can turn it or place it however I want it to go. Okay. If I were to cut this organza the same way as my pattern piece, I don't have a lot of flexibility, especially if I have to line up two sides. So here are the two sides that I've sewn together. And what I did was after this was cut, I took this section here and I did little satin stitches around each one, just around each little spot and you can see it through here. All the satin stitches. And then the back I lined. So this was the sleeve to this pattern. So just another easy, just very easy to do, all with the same stuff. So let's look at this and we'll go back to see how this is embroidering. 
This is the design I talked about. Now, I just chose a running stitch for this embroidery, but you could use a satin stitch, but you have to be careful on knits. When you're gonna use a satin stitch, if you have it too thick, the satin stitch, it will pucker your knit. So this is just a running stitch. It makes it very lightweight on this fabric. And the satin stitch would be a lot thicker and you'd have different issues. So make sure you keep that in mind. So let's go back to the machine and see how this embroidery looks. It's looking really good. And then the last thing it'll do is this inside circle here. It tells me the whole design takes seven minutes. So that's not too bad. So I'm gonna let this embroidery finish. Okay, we're almost finished. Looks like there's just one more little part of this design. This looks great. Okay, let's see what we have. I love that sound. That means we're all finished. So here is our design. Look at how wonderful that looks. You can see the triple stitch. And this is on a sticky back. I don't think I mentioned that. This is a sticky back water soluble stabilizer. So when this is ripped off, throw it in the wash and it disappears. So one pattern can be changed in so many ways by adding cutouts and embroidery.